the first things that I want to do is to get the stock price. To get the stock price, we are using the XPath methods. So let's open this. If I go over here, just remove it. Uh, for this one, I'm going to inspect it. And here we go. This is the thin streamer. And up one level of the thin streamer, we can get the div class. So click on the div class and then right click, copy, copy the X path. This is the ways that we find these informations. Now we have the X path. So X path equals to this. This is the X path. Now we can then find the stock price information from this X path. And now we will call out these functions and then pass this XPath into these functions. So let's work on these functions now. So it will try to help me to capture the stock price information. But just in case it there is any error, I will just return the elements into an empty list. And for this one, I will use the five elements with this by methods. So driver five elements by x path so this is the by here we go this is the by methods that pass the this is the x path that we are going to use so here the first argument is to identify which way that we are going to use to find this element or to find the elements inside that path and then the second arg argument is the locations, that is the X path. So now let's give it a try. Say, let's print this stock and then the function. Let's use these functions and the stock code that I'm going to use is this one. And this will return me all these things okay let's just give them empty list for all of them so, so five okay here we go and then for this one just turn me so let's give it a try and print me out the stock information. Oh, this is a web element. We indeed successfully capture the information uh, with the use of this part X path. Uh, so I need to use dot tags to return the tax information. Here we go. So let's take a quick look on that. With the use of this X path, it will return me all these informations in text in string format or on the other hand and you can see this is the stock price 
and then the changes and also these informations closed at some point so the next things that we want to do is just to we um is just to work on these tax informations and returns to the formats that we want so let's take a look on the uh, tax the first element and the tax for the second element to see what we got So because this will return me, um, it's for this tax is just combine all these tax together into a one string. So in that case, uh, for the first element that is three and the second element that is four. So I'm not going to just um, use the tax index or use the indexing or the slicing to get all these informations. What I'm going to do is to add a split methods to see whether I can capture the price and also the price changes. So if I run it again, so now you can see that for the first split it will return me this price with the changes and then for the second split it will return me for the percentage changes so what i need to do is to come is to split it out again just uh, capture these for the price and capture these for the price changes so let's set up the logic if this stock price informations that that means it uh, return me is the stock price informations if that is not an empty list if that is an empty list it means there's something wrong with the underlying elements there's no such elements so if there's no informations over there. What I wanted to do is to set the price and also the changes uh, with an empty list. On the other hand, if there's some informations, I want to create a temporary variable and that will allow me to store these informations and what I wanted to do is to check if there is a if that is a plus sign or negative uh, in order for me is to uh, work on the uh, in order for me is to split uh, these two elements over here so I will just check uh, this is the ten. I will just check if I find any. Plus, or if I find a negative value. And if I find this, I will split the first pro first sections, first part, uh, as the parts. So if I find a parts, I will just split the first part as the price. On the other hand, if I find a negative, I will split this negative and set aside the first part as the price. So just in case if it cannot find these parts or minus sign in over here, there's something wrong. 
So in that case, I also would like to cater this era and just put the price and also the change with an empty list. Sometimes it will just capture these um, values, but without capturing this value. So in that case, it will also create some uh, error. So I also want to handle this index error because it will because when I call this element, if there's no such elements, it will just create an index error. And then I want to set the changes with a plus sign. Because when we split by using this plus sign, it will just remove that plus. So I want to add it back. So I just add a plus sign and then the for this time that is the first part and I want to combine it with these changes. So I just want to create this. So I split the split these first elements, capture these informations, and now try to just add it back to these seconds elements so that will be the second split over here so this will be the second split um, so if there's an error what I wanted to change is that I still want to I still want to keep the price but for the changes I will just give it an, an empty list in that case the changes will be equals to an empty list and for this one this is just uh, a flip on that, so that is a negative sign for that. Again, we can give this a try. Just remove this two. Um, here, let's print out the price and also the changes. Let's separate them. Print the price and also print the changes. Here we go, and now you can see that we capture these informations, and now I just separate them accordingly. Uh, one goes to the price, and one goes to the changes, and the format is exactly to what we have before. Now we can go to the volume. This is the first part. That is the price and the price changes. And then the second part is the volume. 